Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at Prayers and Magic. This video is sponsored by CML Games. More on that later. Cast supreme sorceries and chant powerful prayers in the new AOS. Gods and their aspects stride the battlefields in Warhammer Age of Sigmar, fighting alongside the very mortals who worship them. While sorcerers tap into the thaumaturgical energy that permeates every realm to conjure magic manifestations that can run wild on the battlefield. Along with changes to commands and combat, the way spells and prayers work in Age of Sigmar has undergone some significant tinkering, leading to more flexibility and opportunities for counterplay, casting, and unbinding magic. From gibbering weird knob shamans caught in a violent grasp of the Wa to the luminous archmage Tekvis, mortals and gods alike can call on the very stuff of the realms to cast powerful spells. Each spellcaster in the game is identified by the keyword wizard, which is followed by their power level, a number of brackets that determines a number of spells, unbinds, and banish abilities they can use per phase, so a hero with keyword Wizard 2 could fire off a single spell and still attempt to banish an endless spell or invocation. Alright, so here is the Weird Knob Shaman. So we see move 4, save 6, control 2, health 6. He is a Wizard 1. And then we see his ranged weapons are Green Puke, 10 inch range, attacks 4, hit 2 plus, wound 4 plus, rend dash, damage d3. An ability it can shoot in combat. And then he also has a melee weapon, the Wall Staff. Three attacks, four plus to hit, wound three plus, rend one, damage d3. And then his passive ability is Brutal Power. Effect, add one to the unit's power level while there are any friendly Iron Jaw units that have 10 or more models wholly within 12 of it. Okay, so interesting. Seems pretty good. Obviously, we see they have basically incorporated his spell into just like a ranged attack. Similar to what we saw in 40k, I'm sure we're going to see some of these other spells incorporated into like just regular passive abilities and stuff like that. Again, similar to what we saw in 40k. Overall, I think they did a great job of Psychic in 40k. There's a couple things that could be different, and I would imagine we're going to see quite a bit of variation in Sigmar, but I'm confident in where they're going with this. Spell lores have changed in the new edition and selected as part of constructing your army. Pick a single spell lore and every sorcerer in your army can attempt to cast any of the spells from the lore. This means no longer need to keep track of which spells a Weird Knob Shaman knows, Mighty Edbutt, you can attempt to cast that spell with any of them. So I really like this. It just simplifies the game and benefits everybody because it eliminates confusion as to like which guy can cast which thing. So Hero Phase 6, Lore of the Weird, Mighty Edbutt. Declare, pick a friendly Iron Jaw Wizard to cast this spell. Pick a visible enemy unit within 18 inches of them to be the target. Then make a casting roll of 2d6. Effect, inflict a d3 mortal damage to the target. If the target is a wizard, inflict 3 mortal damage on the target instead. No more than one friendly wizard can cast the same spell each turn unless the spell has a new unlimited keyword. And even unlimited spells can't be repeatedly cast by the same wizard in the same turn. Casting rolls are still 2d6, and if a casting roll includes a double 1, then the spell is a miscast. The caster takes a d3 mortal damage and can cast no more spells in that phase. Okay, so very cool. Similar to what we've seen like in the past. So reactions. Opponent declared a spell or ability unbind. Used by a friendly wizard within 30 inches of the enemy wizard casting the spell. Effect, make an unbinding roll of 2d6. If the roll exceeds the casting roll for the spell, then the spell is unbound and its effect is not resolved. This reaction cannot be used more than once per casting roll. So again, we see essentially like a counterspell roll-off type situation. Unbinding is an important part of spellcasting counterplay. And with magical intervention letting canny casters crack off spells in their opponent's hero phase, the unbind reaction ability is vital. As an exception to the usual restrictions on abilities, a wizard can attempt to use the unbind reaction multiple times per phase based on their power level, but only once per casting roll. All right, and then we have chanting prayers. The gods have cast their divine light on the prayers in the new edition, which are now more powerful than ever and very different from spells in some key ways. As with your spellcasters and sorcerers, the priests are marked out with a keyword with an associated power level and may use a combination of prayer and banish abilities each phase up to that number. All right, so we had the Slaughter Priest for the Blades of Corn. So once per turn per army, your hero phase, Blood Sacrifice, declare, pick a friendly unit within the unit's combat range to be the target. Effect, roll a d3 on a 2+, plus, inflict an amount of mortal damage on the target equal to the roll, gain one Blood Tithe point. So you're basically like hurting your own unit to gain a Blood Tithe point on a 2-up. Scorn of Sorcery, passive. Effect, this unit can use unbind abilities as if it had Wizard 1. Now a quick message from today's sponsor. CMO Games has been selling Games Workshop products online for over 20 years. They carry the full line of Games Workshop products including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, Paint Tools, and more. Almost all Games Workshop products are priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games takes pre-orders for most Games Workshop products released at their earliest date possible. 12.01am on Saturday, they go live. Most of these pre-order products are also priced at 15% off MSRP. 
CMO Games offer free shipping in the U.S. 48 with an order of $50 or more. Their customer service is top-notch and they ship most orders within 24 hours. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description and let them know that you heard about CMO Games from Warhammer Man. Now back to the video. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, similar to like the existing rules. Like spellcasters, you'll pick one specific prayer lore when building your army, but there the similarities end. Instead of making a single dramatic casting role, these combated clergy beseech their deities, who may even be on the battlefield with them at the same time. Through chanting, every pair will ask you to roll a d6 chanting roll, and on a 2+, plus, your priest gains many ritual points, which accumulate over multiple turns. Each prayer has a chanting value that you'll need to match before it will be answered, and many include a higher value that can power up the resulting miracle even further. For example, a slaughter priest can choose to unleash the Witchbane's Curse to weaken an enemy wizard. Once you've gathered 4+, plus ritual points, or hold out for a chanting value of 8+, plus, to also deal 3 mortal damage to the target. So your hero phase, 4 Blood Blessings of Corn, Witchbane's Curse. Declare, pick a friendly Blades of Corn priest to chant this prayer. Pick a visible enemy wizard within 18 inches of them to be the target, and then make a chanting roll of a d6. Effect, subtract 1 from the target's power level to a minimum of 0. Until the end of the turn, in addition to the chanting roll, was an 8+, plus, inflict 3 mortal damage on the target. Building up your rituals comes with a risk, and the gods in the Age of Sigmar can be extremely petty, so a chanting roll of 1 will lose your priest a d3 ritual points. Note that prayers can't be unbound, so astute commanders will have to target enemy prophets while they're busy amassing ritual points for swift execution. Okay, so very cool mechanic right there. And definitely will incentivize you to take out priests before they get their powerful prayers off. Alright, and then manifesting lore. Endless spells and invocations are still in the mix, but instead of spending points to add endless spells when constructing an army, you can pick a manifestation lore. This grants access to a selection of endless spells and invocations that you'll be able to summon in battle. Some factions will have their own manifestations, while current endless spells from the Malign Sorcery and Forbidden Power are divided into thematic lores. You'll find the infamous and ghastly Purple Sun in the Morbid Conjuration Manifestation lore, for instance alongside Suffocating Gravetide, Malevolent Maelstorm, and Soul Snare Shackles. Wizards and Priests both can attempt to use the Banished Manifestation ability to expunge those autonomous arcane forms. There are more ways to interact with these conjurations, which we'll cover in more detail next week. So banish manifestation, your hero phase. Declare, pick a friendly wizard or priest to use this ability, pick a manifestation within 30 inches of them to be the target, and then make a banishment roll of 2d6. Effect, if the banishment roll equals or exceeds the banishment value listed on the manifestation war scroll, it is banished and removed from play. You cannot pick the same manifestation as the target of this ability more than once per turn. We'll be revealing another new miniature on Monday and learning more about battle plans, the general's handbook, and the battle tactics of a new edition. Okay, so very cool. I like the dynamic here. It's cool that they have like really made prayers more of a thing. They were cool before, but definitely felt a little underpowered relative to magic. Sounds like we have some dynamic changes as well to end the spells and invocations. Overall, I think all this stuff sounds good. Now, obviously balancing like the power of like the prayers and the spells is going to be key. So if there's too strong in the new edition, that's going to be a thing. If they're too weak in the new edition, people are going to feel like they lost something. So let's hope that Games Workshop gets it right and trust them because so far what I'm seeing from Age of Sigmar 4.0 looks awesome. And there is just one note at the bottom. Certain War Scrolls have additional spells unique to them as we saw earlier with Nagash. So very cool. Let me know what you think of this so far, how this is sounding to you. Always like to hear back from you guys in the comments. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring the video. Check out the link in the description to save 15% on Games Workshop products. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man and I'm out of here.